What's up everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms and today's period of instruction are on echo triggers and binary triggers. Let's kick it. Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at you guys today with a much, I believe, anticipated video. I hinted a couple of videos back that we would be talking or discussing echo triggers and binary triggers, and a lot of you guys lit up in the comment section like, heck yes, that's what we've been waiting for. Why won't you give the people what they want, produce content we actually wanna see? So, we are doing that because we love you just like HK. So what we are talking about today are binary triggers and echo triggers. For all of you that might be viewing this and you're wondering what the heck is a binary trigger or an echo trigger, it's quite simple. It's a trigger that allows the user to fire whenever you pull the trigger and then fire another round whenever you release the trigger. Gonna go ahead and start off this video right now by saying as of right now, the ATF does not currently consider this to be a machine gun or anything like this because by definition of a, of a machine gun, you have multiple rounds being sent down range per one pull of the trigger pull, per one action of the trigger, right? So because this is two actions of the trigger, the firing, the hammer falling, and then the reset, whenever the hammer is then pushed back due to the cycling of the firearm, that is considered two actions and therefore not by definition a machine gun. Throwing that out there, this is not an NFA item. So for everybody that wants to throw one of these into their AR pistol, AR rifle, AK MP5 clone or SP5, or Xena Scorpion, I said Xena Scorpion, CZ Scorpion, <laughs> you can do that. Had clones of MP5s on my head, and whatever. Anyway, first one I wanna talk about are the guys who kind of started it all. This is Franklin Armory, and this right here is actually their complete AR build, what they're calling an M4. However, as much as a cool rifle as it is, not really talking about the rifle, I'm strictly talking about the trigger component itself, which is, again, a binary trigger. And straight from the factory, they go ahead and throw on your red sticker that indicates your select. So if right now you'll see that it is currently in safe, you have fire and then you have binary. Pretty sweet, right? So there's all of your different modes. Okay, cool. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and clear this guy. Boom, nice bright orange follower on the mag that it comes with. The firearm is clear. So again, for everybody that has no clue what a binary trigger is, let's show exactly what happens. Now, right now it's in semi-auto. When I pull the trigger, you're gonna hear the hammer fall. Nice. Now it's going to cycle. I'm going to go ahead and charge this guy just like I'm sitting around down range. And now you're going to hear the reset. This is not the hammer falling. Perfect. Now throw it in the binary. You're going to hear the hammer fall. Cool. Cycles. Now you're going to hear the hammer fall again. It's not just a reset. Notice a little bit different sound, right? Very cool. Now, I am a fan of this guy. Franklin Armory, like I said, kind of started it all. They got really cool people working over there and uh, they've got really cool triggers and trigger components and everything, you know, even for like an AK. So how about that? All right, now, before I start getting into trigger pull weight compared to the other ones and everything else, what do you say we cut over to the range and shoot at some? Let's do that. Really quick before we do head to the range, one comment or question that I see a lot in our different videos whenever we feature a binary or echo trigger is, hey, after I send that first round on binary or echo mode, can I stop that second round being sent down range? Uh, is it possible? Yes, yes it is guys. So it'll ring true for all of the different triggers here that we have, binary, echo, whatever it might be, uh, yes. After you fire that trigger and you're in that binary or echo mode, if you flip it to semi or safe, you'll be set. For the sport, which we'll get into here in just a little bit, if you flip the paddle to semi, it'll stop that second round from being sit down range and it'll just reset the trigger. Easy enough. Now let's head over. We've got Franklin Armory's uh, AR-15, they're calling their M4, with of course their binary trigger going into that third position. Let's give it a couple of shots. I 
I do love a binary trigger, let me tell you. And the guys at Franklin know how to make a good one as well. And this, like, a, uh, like I mentioned, this is their complete rifle. You guys saw at the intro, the Fostec Eagle, which has the Fostec Gen 2, also has a third position. So does the Franklin M4 here. Ooh. They're nice, guys. They're nice. Lots of fun. Then again, who doesn't enjoy a binary trigger or echo trigger, great guns, things like that. All right, so I will say this, they do require for Franklin Armory's uh, AR triggers at least, or from some of the other ones that are just a trigger pack, like the CZ Scorpion, they do require a little bit of a break-in period. We've given away Scorpions, we've dropped it, you know, the, the binary trigger by Franklin on those guys. And initially, I actually thought we were in a little bit of trouble because having I was having some cycling issues. Uh, but after about three mags, I want to say, so approximately nine, 90 rounds, all of a sudden that thing was just <laughs> letting them rip. So I was super happy about that. Also too, I was shooting it dry. I did learn that you need to lube up, lube up those trigger packs and everything before you start shooting them. Now granted, as they break in and everything, you'll notice they'll shoot just fine. All right, uh, that was my only one disclaimer. So let's go ahead really quick because I wanna compare each of them. Let's get a little bit of a trigger pull weight happening here. Uh, I have yet to really measure reset and binary but just so you guys understand where we're at as far as resets go i'm going to try to come over here best that we can i'm going to go ahead and put it in semi i just want to show this before we get a weight so right now i'm going to go ahead and there we go pull so you'll notice well, yeah there's no take up that's super easy again reset there it is and then i'm going to go ahead and start pulling and guys we're already at the wall as soon as i pull Nice. All right, now let's go ahead and get a weight on this. There we go. And let's just pull away. Boom. Look at that. So 3.4, three pounds, four ounces. Nice. All right, let's do it one more again, just because I wanna see if that's true. All right, reset, there we go. Yep, that time, 3.15. So under four pounds after measuring twice. Awesome. Let's do it one more time, but this time in binary. Let's see if we get a similar reading. Here we go. Coming on down. 4.7. All right, and I think that was actually a little bit me. I think I kept pulling after the break. Let's try it one more time. 3.10, yeah, I think that last one was me. Very, very cool, liking that a lot, guys. Now let's say, shoot this guy in binary, let's see what that reset would look like for the second shot. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. Not much take up at all, I like that a lot. You're right there at the wall. And now we're gonna go ahead and let it drop again. Right there, cool. So you guys see that you've got just a few millimeters of, of, of reset, pretty much, of travel, is what I'm trying to say. Nice, all right. So just keep that in mind. We're hanging out right under four pounds for the Franklin Armory binary. Sweet, all right. Now let's talk about Fostec. So we've got Fostec. This is their Fostec Eagle. I have one of the earlier uh, models called the Fostec Fighter Light Rifle right up there. Obviously mine has a little bit more work done to it because uh, I've you know shot it a lot and you know did a lot of work to it. Anyway, however, the Fostec Eagle here, super happy about it. Can I just go ahead and say that both of these manufacturers made in USA, USA companies, that is Awesome. All right, so guys, this one here, just like the Franklin, has a third position on it, Ambi Safety Select. Okay, that's something that both of these guys have going for it. Very cool. And there it is. So this is, again, this is the Fostec Eagle. Let's go ahead and make sure this guy is completely clear. Awesome, we are clear here. Now let's go ahead and talk about this trigger. Now I mentioned before how it had like a, a trigger safety on it. This is a different component, an extra component that's added to this guy for a little bit more safety. Not saying that Franklin isn't safe by any means. It's just something that Fossek has gone ahead and added as an extra piece. And uh, really quick, I'm going to show you what that looks like. And since YouTube's probably going to be already be mad that we're showing binaries, I'm not going to show you how to disassemble an AR-15, even though it, all it takes is a push of a rear push anyway all right so let me push this guy out really quick 
and show you guys what I am talking about. So right here is the trigger pack and the AR Gen 2, this is the Gen 2 Fostec Echo Trigger, is more of a drop-in trigger. It is not, you know, two different components. It's all one drop-in piece. And then here's that little safety that I'm talking about right here. This piece also drops in and then you've got the spring that offers a little bit of retention on it. And if this is not forward, then it will not shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. All right, so right now we're in safe. Obviously this thing's not gonna work. The moment I put it into fire and try to pull the trigger, not working. Unless this guy is forward, now when I pull the trigger, hammer falls, right? And then reset, boom, cool. Let's go ahead and put it in binary, same thing. Again, it's not going to shoot if we do not have this safety forward just like that. And actually I think it showed better this way here. And then when I pull the trigger, it falls. Comes back, reset, falls again. Very cool, All right? So there it is for you guys inside of the lower receiver of what would be your AR-15. Fun, lightweight little guy. Also too, the Echo Trigger versus the Binary Trigger as far as name goes, two different companies, two different names. Echo makes sense. It's kind of like echoing around, right? Whenever you fire, pull, okay, I get it. I see what you did there. And then binary is just what they're calling that as far as it's not full auto, it's not three round bursts, it's not semi-auto, it's binary. Buy two, makes sense, got it, cool. All right, let's go ahead and measure our trigger pull weight on this guy. Hopefully it shows up well for y'all. Actually, I wanna show you guys really quick. Let's go ahead and check the reset out and everything on this. Again, we're clear, so let's go ahead and all right, so a little bit more, so there's take up on this one compared to the Franklin where you're already at the wall. You'll notice we've got a little bit of take up. And whew, that is nice though. It just goes right into it. And then your reset, we are on semi. Nice. This is, this almost feels like a match trigger to me though. It's a very smooth trigger. All right, now let's go ahead and check out that binary. All right, and then we're gonna depress. A little bit of take up, same as the semi. Boom, we're there. Okay, and then reset. Well, you know, echo coming down. Boom, there you go, nice. All right, I will say that this one does feel like it is a heavier trigger. So let's go ahead and check that out really quick. Coming on back, Ooh, right there. Five pounds, eight ounces, teetering right at nine ounces. All right, let's go ahead. Try it one more time. Six pounds, two ounces. All right, so right around six pounds for that one. Not bad, especially for something that would be considered maybe like a, uh, I guess a, a duty type uh, trigger pull weight. Nice. And uh, just for fun, let's try it in semi, see if it reads the same. Yep, just teetering under six pounds. Nice, very, very cool. All right, so that right there again is the Fostec Echo, or the, I'm sorry, Fostec Eagle, I was thinking Echo, Fostec Eagle rifle, but is the Fostec Echo Gen 2. Now we've got one other AR style trigger that I wanna talk about is the Fostec Sport trigger. Now this is the Echo Sport, and let me grab that, and I have that one on my personal rifle here, and this is my short-barreled rifle by Daniel Defense, my Mark 18. And I uh, left my EOTech on, so my batteries are probably shot now. Anyway, all right, clear this guy. The difference between the AR Gen 2 and the Sport Trigger is this guy here does not have a third position. It has ambi safety select, which is very nice, but I'm pushing, it ain't going into a third position. This simply has a paddle right here that attaches to the forward part of the trigger. There's no extra drilling or anything like that that needs to take place when it comes to these trigger, or yeah, to the uh, Echo Sports. It all connects into that same hole right there where the trigger goes in your lower receiver. Very cool. All right, now the paddle was pretty much a design I guess you could say the sport is based for a little bit more affordability, but in my mind too, and this might be something that 
you know, this is just me thinking out loud. The sport is a good option for any of you guys that might be afraid of, you know, these lawyers or whatever else saying, well, hey, if it has a third position, whether it be binary or what, that's considered now a machine gun. Well, this guy here, being the sport, it doesn't have a third position. It's got a paddle, right? So, I mean, that's not a machine gun. So. There you go. So for any of you guys that might be afraid of that type of stuff of happening, again, understand what the definition of a machine gun is, as I previously mentioned, but also too, this guy doesn't have a third position at all. So there you go, easy day. All right, let's talk a little bit about this guy after we take it to the range and shoot it some. And the next one we've got is the Echo Trigger Sport. And that one right there is what the paddle that you see does not have a third position. And this is on my, uh, my personal SBR Daniel Defense Mark 18. And I figured, you know, since this is on my personal, why not go ahead and throw in a uh, D60 and have some fun, right? Let's do it. Yep, Magpul needs to make a 100 round drum now. <laughs> but uh, guys, I really am a fan of the Echo Sport. Uh, mainly because it's a little bit more affordable than the other options out there. Simple enough install, but man, it does run good. Oh, obviously you can go through 60 rounds rather quick. Lightens the load a little bit. <laughs> if you guys can't tell, I really like shooting my Mark 18. <laughs> Anyway, let's hop right into the trigger pull on this guy. Uh, first off, let me show you guys uh, the reset and all on this one. Now this one I will say, I believe has actually a quicker and shorter reset out of all the triggers we've talked about. Uh, now, granted, as I mentioned before too, this one might have a, a little bit faster rate of fire simply because of being a shorter gas system. Let me know your thoughts about that down in the comments. Uh, however, this guy here, just notice this, right? So right now it is in echo mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger. Little bit of a take up, barely anything. Reset here, or cycles, and now watch when this hammer falls now, as I go ahead and start to, ooh. I mean, guys, we might have a millimeter or two movement. Like, it's barely anything. That is awesome. All right, let's go ahead and feel how it, let's see that uh, trigger pull weight. We're gonna go ahead and start applying pressure. Boom. All right, so that one right there is reading seven pounds, 12 ounces, but the break on that one caught me off guard. I think I kept going afterwards, so let's try it one more time. Gonna keep going, applying. Yeah, I that breaks so sudden for me, guys, that's seven pounds, 13 ounces, that I feel myself hitting the wall or hitting the rear, you know, as far back as the end of the travel of the trigger. I'm gonna try it one more time on this guy here. Let's see if I can actually do this right. Ah, 7.13. So I think that's where I'm gonna be at on this guy here. Not bad. And then just because I've done it for all the other ones, I'm gonna switch the paddle over to semi. And we're gonna try it one time on semi, just see how it is. 7.10, all right, seven pounds, 10 ounces. All right, very nice. Now. What I want to do, if I'm talking about speed, reset, things like that, uh, how quick can I mag dump these guys? So let's head over to the range one more time and let's do a little quick little time comparison between them. All right, guys, first up, Franklin Armory here, 10 rounds loaded up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and say this about my shot timer here. I don't think it was really made to pick up like, you know, real high rates of fire. So it might not say 10 or anything like that on here on the screen, but as long as we got that first, first round and last round ready to go, we'll be all set. So let's go ahead and make ready. And then once this guy beeps at me, we're gonna do it. Flip it in the binary here, let's go. All right, so it says eight at 1.47. All right, we've got the AR Gen 2 now. It does have that third position. Magazine of 10 rounds is loaded. Let's go ahead and make ready. Get those three seconds going. Nice, all right, 1.38. This thing shoots fast, shot timer just can't pick it up. Oh well. 
All right, guys, now we've got the Fostec Sport Trigger, which doesn't have a third position. It has that paddle right over here. Now, this isn't the most scientific type of experiment, right? This guy's got a shorter uh, gas system on it, so gas doesn't have to travel as fast. Might have naturally just a faster rate of fire, but for fun, we still wanna do it and check it out. And of course, the timer here, as long as it picks up that first and last round, that's all that matters here. If it hears, you know, a couple rounds in between, is it thinking of the same? That's fine, so as long as we actually have Good count, we are good as far as seconds go. Let's do it. Gonna go ahead and flip it on. Timer's going. All right, 1.18. Nice. So my Mark 18 here is a quick boy, that is for sure. Now again, I think that partially might be because of the quicker reset that I've noticed on the sport trigger. Uh, granted, Again, it's got a shorter gas system on it, things like that, short barrel. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments about whether or not you think the gas system has something to do with that. I think it's the quicker reset. Then again, I'm a trigger puller, not a you know smart genius that comes up with how to make cool freaking guns like Daniel Defense and Fostec and Franklin. So cool stuff to think about. Now, Franklin Armory also makes some pretty cool triggers for AKs like that guy right there, why it's been back here this whole time and why you guys probably wanna see it shoot. So, sure, why not? So, yes, we do have a Romanian RPK that has a Franklin Armory binary trigger in it for AKs. Yeah, we do. And uh, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited to see how it shoots. Let's see it. There goes the target. <laughs> yep, I will say this, the Franklin Armory triggers are super nice and I <laughs> I guess I didn't have that on correct, oh well. Uh, but let's just go ahead and pop that guy on out like it should then. You'll notice on these guys here, there's a little clasp. And when I close this, I noticed that this leg was a little bit longer than that one, but I figured that wouldn't matter. It totally matters. Make sure you put your bipod away correctly. <laughs> anyway, uh, this guy here is fun. One thing I will notice about the Franklin Armory triggers, as good as they are, they take a little bit of a break in there. So make sure you got yours well lubed and you'll be ready to go. Send a couple hundred rounds downrange with it. You'll be set. So of course it comes with, uh, it actually comes with an ambi safety. However, this guy has an optics rail on it so it would not work with an ambi safety. So I got just a little short throw on here which is very nice. So right here is your safe. You'll notice again, we are clear. And just to be double safe, I'll go ahead and pop the mag out. Safe, trigger's not doing anything. Flip it to semi. Guys, I want you to check this out, all right? I'm actually gonna hold it like this here so you can see this. Got just a little bit of resistance and then it drops. That is super sweet. One more time. There's your reset, very cool. Now let's flip it into that third position for binary. Yes. Nice, oh yeah guys, that is way too cool. I can't wait to send a few hundred more rounds down range with this guy, get it real broken in there, so that way whenever we come out with the contest video for this guy, oh, did I say that out loud? So that's pretty sweet, but there's also different ones out there for like the CZ Scorpion, the MP5 clones like the HK SP5, which isn't really a clone if it's made off the same assembly line and the same people, but like the Zeniths and PTRs that are out there, it runs great in those. So if you're a Scorpion or MP5 owner, uh, definitely take a look at those because they're a heck of a lot of fun. Now the AK one, that one is pretty sweet. And why is it in an RPK that's sitting behind me right now? I don't know, for you guys to find out later, I guess. So there you go. All right, guys, hopefully this answered y'all's question because I know you guys had quite a few of them. You guys wanted to do an overview over each of these. And I think we did an all right job with it. Again, let me know your thoughts and comments down below, especially when it comes to the cycling rate of this guy here. And uh, yeah, I just wanna hear what you guys have to say about all the different binaries and, and echo triggers that we got because they're a heck of a lot of fun, all right? Guys, also too, we are currently giving away, speaking of pretty fun triggers, how about a crank system for a trigger? And I'm talking about the Tipman Armory Gatling gun that takes 
Glock mags and is chambered in 9mm. That is our current giveaway. Now, if you're watching this video in the future, we might be giving away a Honey Badger by Q with the Franklin Armory binary trigger in it, or we might be giving away this RPK with a binary trigger in it, or we might be giving away something completely different, like a Christensen Arms 300 Wind Mag bolt action rifle. I don't know. You guys have to follow us and find out, I guess. So get your entries in on the Tipman Armory Gatling gun, because who doesn't want one of those sitting on their coffee table? If you don't know why I'm bringing up coffee tables, you haven't seen our video announcing that as our giveaway. Don't miss out on that one, guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that fun stuff there. We greatly appreciate it just as much as we greatly appreciate you guys. God bless you all, and we'll see you guys next time at ClassicFirearms.com.